I'll start by sort of acknowledging like one of the things I love about this this project is the connection, um, your connection, Chris, to this world. And, um, you know, I've in my career found myself gravitated, always gravitated toward, you know, places and people that feel familiar to me in some kind of way or where, where I already have a cultural competency on some level that gives me the confidence that I can go in and tell a story sort of in, a, in, a, in an authentic way. So um, and I know that you and um, Ben have obviously obviously collaborated prior prior to this this particular project, but I was just wondering like which one of you came up with the idea for this one? <laughs> so it was Ben through our producer, Jeremy Lambert. So Jeremy sent Ben an article back when we were working, I think maybe even before we started working on Concerto, the, the film about my grandfather. And so we were working on that film when Ben started to investigate the shop and started interviewing people down there. And, and then he told me about it um, back then. And like what, like, like at what point did you realize like, oh, this is a world that I am sort of, you know, intimately familiar with, or were, were some of those revelations, did those come in, in time? First was, was a, um, moment of feeling so surprised that I didn't know it existed. I think for me, it was like starting to immediately recall the importance of the music room or the band room in my schools or the auditorium at my school in terms of how much time I spent in those spaces and how important they were to me and playing, you know, school instruments and never once ever thinking about how do these things stay in shape essentially. And so for me, that was the immediate moment of feeling like uh, a deep curiosity and desire to to uh, investigate more of this and learn more about it just because it felt like a, um, a piece of my history or a piece of my development that I, I didn't even know was was there and really integral. If you could talk, Chris, a little bit about sort of the role that sort of you, you alluded to it, like, you know, the band room or, or just, you know, music, you know, the role that music education and exposure to music sort of played um, in, in your life and, and, and how you sort of brought that into the telling of the story. Being a kid, especially in certain points of life, can be so lonely. It can be so like um, confusing. And there's so many things uh, that are difficult to process. And I remember how important the piano was. For, but at the time, it was just like a, uh, you know, coping mechanism or like a survival tool that I didn't even realize uh, was so helpful for me in navigating the universal difficulties of, of being uh, a kid. And so for me, it felt like not only um, did I immediately start to recall those moments and think about those moments and think about like how much it was important for me to have um, um, an instrument and access to an instrument and, and a space where I could do that. But meeting these uh, these repair people, these technicians, and thinking about how they don't get to see the people that they're impacting. Mm -hmm. And vice versa, like thinking about myself and never knowing that the, there is this team of people working to make sure that we had working instruments. For me, it felt like uh, in the making of the film, it was important that they became, uh, they had a chance to have a dialogue, even if they weren't in the same space, that, that we could see how those two groups were um, uh, interconnected. We could see how, what this work is, how, how important this work is and, and who is being impacted by it. Um, at, at what point sort of like, are your wheels turning as a filmmaker in the sense of how to visualize it, how to narratively, Put it together um obviously you you specialize in short form um was it always going to be short form if i really think back and try to remember what it was that i was like oh it's a movie i you know i have made a lot of short documentaries about master crafts people and it is just such a fantastic world to film because it's so easy for the external to represent the internal right, as they're puzzling mm. out this instrument or, you know, fixing something or creating something, and then they're talking about what's going on inside, it go it just goes together really well. 
and it lends itself to music and sound and all those things. Um, and I think there was just something so compelling about not just fixing an inanimate thing, but fixing a thing that can make music and not only a thing that can make music, but a thing that brings joy um, and purpose to all of these young people in LA and that it was the last one in the country. I was like, okay, this has like so many elements. And my first question was, mm. I wonder if Chris went to LAUSD. At, at different times, we talked about it being four different short films. I don't even remember that, Chris. It's each person getting their own film. Like a, uh, like a series, kind of, like a mini a series. series. We, we definitely toyed with it being, maybe this should just be a feature. We toyed with animation in the movie. You know, we've been working on this film for four years, like just us, like, you know. Wow. Now you see the big searchlight logo on it, but this was not, this was a scrappy old production on a hard drive for many years before we ever finished it, before we ever got to show it to the likes yeah. of Searchlight or LA Times or anything like that. So there was a lot of, there was many scrappy years of working on this film, which mm. was our editor, Nick Wright, uh, and me and Chris and a very small handful of people. Wow, I had no idea to, that four years respect on that. Yeah, um, <laughs> this one took a while. And I noticed like in in and you guys' style that you pay a lot of attention to mood, you pay a lot of attention to the visuals, you pay tremendous attention to sound design, which I think is one of the most under uh, appreciated uh, you know pieces of, of craft of, of nonfiction. Do you have certain rules as as sort of documentarians that you um, sort of ad adhere adhere to and sort of representing uh, the reality as you see it? Something I, that's always attracted me to Ben as a filmmaker and, and his other films that I feel like um, makes me really prideful about this film and, and Concerto is is creating a an incredibly cinematic experience around everyday people around people that like that don't get a chance to see themselves look like the star of a film you know and i think that given that we're still making sure that they feel like what is being shared is their truth and their like you know vulnerability and and not changing their story to make it feel like something that works for the film like making sure that that feels like an honest representation of of their truth for me it just feels really exciting for these people that toil away in like the shadows of a job that they feel like nobody knows exists to be able to go to a movie theater and watch themselves look as like beautiful in this like very heightened uh, emotional even with the music and all that um, emotional experience feels like um uh, a big part of the reason why why we do it as well is like mm. you know these people that are unsung heroes feel like real heroes in in, in these stories how would you describe the process with this particular story of how it started really coming together? Probably like one of the most um, kind of like looking back fateful moments, but consequential moments was when we first went into the repair shop, nobody wanted to participate. Not one person, everybody had their arms crossed. <laughs> we had to kind of really put on a song and dance of why they should allow us to film there. And it was, it was like very old fashioned, right? Like literally everyone kind of came out in a half moon and, you know, the pitch was made. And then at the end, I kind of had this big kind of Jerry Maguire moment of like, you know, who's with me? Like who, who wants to be in the film? <laughs> and four people raised their hand. And those are the four people in the movie, Steve, Patty, Dana, and Dwayne. Those are the four wow. people that there was one from each department coincidence that all four of them had such incredible stories, fate, you know, that they were all different and diverse elements of Los Angeles, the, you know, what the kind of neighbors that you come to learn and love in, in LA just happened at that very moment when they raised their hand. And then from the interview that kind of dictated, okay, mm. what are the chunks of the story? And then, mm. um, a lot of time was spent, you know, Chris reached out to his old music professors and we talked to a lot of kids to find those four that are in the movie. Was I mean, that, did you and Chris have to sort of like, like get on the same page with like who, who to select? Here's the truth. 
I was against the whole kid thing. I didn't want any kids in the movie. I didn't want to see one kid. I, I said, Chris, that is, it's the easy way out, right? Everybody thinks kids are cute, right? Like, you know, layer all these kids in and then everyone will love the movie. Like, that's the easy way out. That, that's the expected, that's the expected. Yeah, yeah, um, we need them to fall in love with these, these repair people. That's the hard cinematic, you know, uh, uh, line and road that we have, the back road that we have to take. And Chris was like, I understand, but, and then, told me his own experience of being a kid and what the instrument meant. I mean, it made the movie, you know, it's the first thing you see and you fall in love, you know, Porsche, I love the violin and you, and the whole, it, it creates a whole purpose. What is this movie about, you know, the act of repair and about, you know, the, the right of a child to express themselves through music. You know, I noticed that um, you had another composer on this. Um, piece and I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit about about that as in and um sort of why why that was given that you're you know you you easily could have you know composed this on your own like what what was behind that decision I love collaboration like that's I think the best things come out of collaboration and the best things come out of multiple people from different backgrounds having a look at something and being a part of something and given the space to lend their creative voice to it. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, Ben and I both uh, arrived at the idea of Katia, one, because we've known each other, we've known Katia from different um, uh, uh, points. Uh, like Ben has worked with her on a couple of other uh, short films and uh, I've known her for a while uh, just through like the composing uh, community essentially. And we both have been fans of hers for a while. And so I think she became the immediate choice because she's an incredible composer and uh she's also from southern california and like also end up having this connection to peter rotter who actually introduced um ben and i and is a producer on the film so there's all these like connections where it felt like you know that feels like the right choice and it being a story about uh you know people that don't generally have access to music or you know, people from diverse backgrounds having access to music, it felt important to us that we had that role of the composer be represented by someone who, uh, you know, a female composer, which was also underrepresented. Um, mm -hmm. And so the the collaborative process was really me giving her, um, Ben and I talked about having strong themes for each of these departments, each of these characters. And once I had those themes established, it was really just giving her those melodies and for me, that was one of the most exciting parts was like seeing how she um, reimagined those melodies for each of those those stories and how she could, you know, craft um, the score around um, uh, each of these characters um, based on these little like short melody snippets that I gave her. The score in this film would have been very different if I had scored it. And I and I feel so happy with how Katya scored it that I couldn't imagine what it would be like if I had done it. So I think I'm so thankful to have uh, that collaboration because it just, again, brought this um, approach and, and freshness and this uniqueness that she could have only brought to it. And it was nice to be in that role of a collaborator as opposed to, um, uh, you know, dictating what, what I thought it should be specific. Walk us through the, the release of the movie. Like, when did you first share it with, with an audience? And what was that experience like? And then how, how did the partners come on board? It started with rejection. Started with rejection. So that we got, the, nobody wanted, nobody Very familiar wanted. with it. <laughs> nobody wanted, you're familiar. Every filmmaker, right? Nobody wanted, it was too long. You know, cut out 20 minutes, delete this character. Um, we did not have the ending when we first started showing it to people. So it just cut to credit roll at the end. Oh, interesting. Um, okay. We, um, and, and the LA Times, you know, who has started the short doc platform in the last couple of years, um, you know, obviously it's an LA story. It, it, we knew that it was going to be a really great fit from that perspective. Um, just... Mm -hmm sheer LA, LA. And also I feel like, you know, the, the movie, um, um, we put a lot of effort into it being kind of a theatrical experience, you know, 
um it's got this big score and the sound and it's you know anamorphic and you know there's a lot of sort of like big motion picture elements to it and um the searchlight thing came about um when the film the film was accepted into telluride which was a huge boom we were so thrilled i remember because that was the first time that we really got yeah, you can be rejected by everyone and then get into telluride you're going to be fine yeah and then everyone is the things it's so cool right after that um so i remember i mean that was a huge relief hmm. huge relief it was, oh my god we have been wasting our time here you know um yeah because we believed in it but we were having a hard time finding anybody else who agreed um and uh and it was at at um telluride where searchlight first clued into it they're just supporting it they're just supporting it as um just sort of adding their sort of name to it and then helping you bring it to to audiences? Yeah, it was a, a deal made in mutual agreement that as many people as possible need to see this film. This is not a big money film. This is not a big money scenario. This was a bunch of people, bunch of Los Angeles people who were like, oh, how can we all help get this film out to as many people as possible? Um, and that's right. what it's always been. And that's what it will always be about is, mm. you know, access for Porsche to get the violent. That, that's what this is about. And everybody on the team, when you, whether you're on the Searchlight side or LA Times side or from Chris's team or from my team, that, that is our focus is about access to music. And I was, it was amazing. It was wonderful to find that same spirit at this big company. How has it been sort of taking the film out and have you been getting different responses by from different people to, you know, or, or, or is it a mix? Like, how, how would you describe it? You know, I think for me, um, I want every time I watch it, I sit down with every screening and I still feel involuntarily emotional <laughs> hearing some of these stories. <laughs> and that's been the case ever since, you know, I watched some of those early assembly cuts. And so I think that's something that, has resonated so um viscerally with me that seems to also resonate with a lot of people like anytime we screened it there's audibly people crying or or like you know um feeling really emotional watching it and that really just speaks to the vulnerability of the these humans to share their stories and how much we can relate to those stories um i think the other thing too for me is is once Steve and Patty and Dwayne and uh, Dana watched it and they felt seen and they felt emotional and they felt like their truth was shared. At this point, it's great that people are connecting to it for that larger purpose, like Ben was saying, in terms of making sure people recognize the value of music and education, recognizing, you know, the value of this uh, repair shop and the idea of repair. But um, those individuals being so open and vulnerable and then feeling um, uh, uh, seen, I think it was really like a, a huge success kind of uh, on its own. With Concerto as a conversation, we wanted to make a tribute to Chris's grandfather. And this film, we wanted to make a tribute to these unsung heroes who represent the same way Horace represented, you know, that entire generation and the great migration and all the, sacrifices that were made these repair people represent every every person who gives their labor so that a young person can get educated and and they represent every teacher every janitor every engineer every school bus driver that it takes for the whole system to work so that you know, a, a child can be educated so that our society can be um, successful. And the that's the point, right? The point is to give credit and to genuflect to people who never really get the big round of applause. I think it's a dream come true for them. And for us, it's just like, you know, over the top chills a kind of experience to see that happen. Wow. Well, I, I think it's a beautiful piece of work and I think it's a film that's going to inspire people in surprising ways and, and um, you know, helps us reframe and 
really recognize sort of what we often take for granted that's just beyond our 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 field of vision i think is you know so important especially in, in this day and age where there's so much that is needed in our communities for, for us to sort of support each other and to allow each other's potential to come to its full full uh blossoming so i appreciate the the role that this film is doing in telling that story and wish you guys the best of luck with the film as it rolls out into the world thank you so much Pete.